The whole of human history is full of secrets and mysteries. In fact, even now, in the age of science and technology, our whole world order is causing thousands of questions, many of which cannot be fully answered by scientists. The Time Puzzle crew tries to uncover some of those mysteries surrounding the mysterious places of Kazakhstan. South Kazakhstan region, the place of the junction of the great Sirdaya River and its confluent Kiles. The border with the Republic of Uzbekistan is quite near. In the spring, this flat terrain is covered with limestone herbs and tamarisk thickets, smoothly rising and descending as if on the waves of the ocean. And it's because small hills are scattered everywhere. There are hundreds of them. It would seem that nature itself has created here this mysterious mixture of elements. Long ago, people called this place Minto Bay. And it keeps the secrets left by the mysterious Kangu state. We are in a completely unique location. It is called Minto Bay. Min is a numeral meaning a thousand, but in the Turkish languages it is the subtext which signifies a huge number. We have been working here for two years, but the monument is so interesting and incomprehensible. Who lived here a thousand years ago? For the first time it was mentioned in 138 BC by one of the Chinese travelers who said that in the interfluve of the Amudarya and Sirdaya there is a huge state of Kangu. What artifacts does the town of Kultube hide? Here is a piece of pottery. Look, here it is. Here's the bone. It is also ceramics. And here are the artifacts which show that the life was humming there 2000 years ago. Unique finds and discoveries of South Kazakhstan archaeologists in this episode. Watch right now. Mintobea. There are many ancient burial mounds here. But for quite unknown reasons, this unique area has long been ignored by scientists. Only since the 80s of the 20th century, archaeologists began to show interest in this huge necropolis. What surprises and discoveries has Minter Bear prepared for the world? Hello, it is the Time Puzzle and me, Sergei Alexianak. The first archaeological research of Mintebea was conducted in the middle of the last century. In the period from 1948 to 1952, one of the detachments of the South Kazakhstan Archaeological Expedition worked here under the guidance of Professor Alexander Natanovich Benstam. The detachment was headed by his students Yevgenia Argeva and Georgi Patsevich. Having designated the place on the archaeological map of Kazakhstan, they, as indicated in the reporting documents, tried to open three burial mounds. Then the scientists could not find anything and then, by a strange coincidence, Minto Bear was literally forgotten. In general, this huge burial ground seems to have fallen out of the field of view of archaeologists for almost 80 years, 70 to 80 years. It is very strange, because this colossal mass of mounds could not pass unheeded by scientists at all. Alexander Nikolaevich Podushkin is a well-known Kazakhstan archaeologist, doctor of historical sciences, professor of the South Kazakhstan State Pedagogical Institute. He devoted his scientific work to uncovering the mystery of this mysterious terrain. I tried to shed some light on all of this. What is the reason to all of this? Why such a giant burial ground was outside the sphere of interest of our archaeologists? We organized an expedition from the South Kazakhstan Pedagogical Institute with the participation of the Regional History Museum and the Central State Museum of the Republic of Kazakhstan. Now this expedition is doing reconnaissance. Our task is to decide what is it, what funerary structures are in the bottom. After a break of almost 30 years, in 1982 archaeological excavations were resumed here. During the period from 1982 to 1986, the archaeological detachment of the Shimkent Pedagogical Institute worked at Minto Bay. It was led by Nikolai Pavlovich Podushkin, archaeologist, father of Alexander Nikolaevich. 
The result of the expedition was a partial topographic survey of the ancient necropolis and ancient settlement, and the result was the inclusion of Mintabe in the archives of the Monuments of History and Culture of Southern Kazakhstan. One of the reasons for such a less than enthusiastic attitude towards the Mintabe necropolis could be the absence of any significant discoveries during the very first excavations. Perhaps even the fact that Agaeva and Patsevich made such a conclusion that they, these barrows, were empty. The so-called cenotaphs. These are symbolic burial mounds which are filled in honor of those soldiers that were killed somewhere in remote areas. But despite the skeptical attitude to the Mintabe mounds, the scientist continues to make excavations. And he has very good reasons for this. This the so-called contact zone. What means contact? This Kelet step is a zone of development, economic activity of nomads, and a huge fort. Farmers who live here for hundreds of years, and now they are in contact, and for us it is important to know the extent of this contact. Historical and cultural, perhaps there is some another sphere. Do you understand? Yes? especially since it is not far away near Tashkent and here is the Chacha ancient oasis. Also a little higher, maybe 80 kilometers away, a large river of Chechik flows into the Sirdaya and there is a powerful center of Kanka which is defined as the capital, one of the possessions of the ancient Kangu. The Serdarya River is the largest in length water artery of Central Asia. Almost all the known ancient civilizations were created to some extent in the basin of its riverbed. But this majestic river has one insidious feature. It changes. It has the property of changing the course and destroying whole civilizations. In the rivers that flow into the Serdarya near this place, here, in our case, it is an oasis of the Mintabe and a town of Kultabe near the junction of the Kiles River into the Serdaya River. Nature itself makes scientists hurry with the excavations. Together with Alexander Podushkin, his archaeological detachment includes the senior researcher of the Department of Archaeology of the Historical Museum of Local Law, Andrei Donets, who studies and restores found artifacts. I was his student since 1991, studying at the Pedagogical Institute. Well, accordingly, from the same year, starting with the student practice of archaeological, we continued to communicate. I constantly work with him together. He has spent his whole life dealing with the problems of the catacomb burials that he is digging. Why are we here? Because he believes it's a catacomb. We are trying to find out all this now. For the second year, we have been working here, but the monument is so interesting and incomprehensible that it is not necessary to speak about specifics in terms of funeral rites or funeral construction. Then the proximity of the town of Kultabe on the right bank of the Kales River, it reminds a little of the situation with the Barija burial ground and the mount of Juan Tobe, since a part of the Barija burial ground is a necropolis of the mount of the Juan Tobe, actually consisting of another type of monuments, but nevertheless inscribed in the general geographic environment. The burial ground of Borija and the fortress of Joan Tobe are unique archaeological sites located 50 kilometers from the city of Shimkent. Borija necropolis is considered the largest burial ground of the pre-Islamic period, not only in Kazakhstan, but throughout Central Asia. The first excavations were carried out in the late 19th century. Subsequently, such outstanding archaeologists as Alexander Bernstam and Georgi Patsevich studied this territory. It was in the territory of the necropolis of Borija where the discoveries of the so-called catacomb burial were made. A special funeral rite practiced in this area from the 2nd century BC to the 4th or 5th century of our millennium. Catacomb burials is a complex underground structure made under the level of the outer surface and often consisting of three elements. A narrow, sometimes rather wide corridor that descends deeper. 
The lower part, the end of the lower part of this corridor is a manhole. And through this manhole, a burial chamber is chosen in the ground. In the middle of the first millennium BC, this territory was part of the union of Saka tribes. It was during this period that the first, the largest burial mounds of the so-called Zaris type appeared. The burial ground of Mintobe, the basis of it, the original probably was formed by the first Saka burial mounds. On the tops of these remnants of the rusty comb-like, which are dissected by size here, and then this burial ground grew by the arrival of another population population here, and thus its modern appearance was formed. With fixed on one side of the chain of mounds, and this is a classic Saka style, chains. And on the other hand, the unsystematic arrangement of embankments is characteristic of the settled agricultural Kangyu population. And there may be other funerary reconstructions. For example, neoses. These are the so-called crypts, underground and above-ground neoses. Excavations is extremely time-consuming and expensive process. The works are carried out only in the warm period of the year, and it is usually above 40 degrees Celsius in the South Kazakhstan region. Archaeologists live in the field deprived of the amenities of civilization. With all this, a full study of one barrow costs hundreds of thousands of tenge. It is inappropriate to spend so much effort, money and time on an empty hill, in which there is not enough to study the number of artifacts. How in this vast array of mounds to determine where to dig? There is a certain method of excavation in archaeology, which any archaeologist must adhere to. The concept of reconnaissance excavations, exploratory excavations, they presuppose the laying of small pits in order to find out and obtain primary information that serves as a kind of chrono indicator and cultural indicator for this monument. What motivates the researchers in their hard work? Why, in spite of their poor results, do they persist in their research? It was a very large oasis. In general, the oasis concentration of monuments is a normal phenomenon. Here is a site of ancient settlement. It covers several hectares, it is three parts, and it is called Kulturbe. And the burial ground is a thousand mounds. That is, people lived here for about two thousand years. They left behind such objects that we can explore and ultimately we can see clearly how they lived, what they did. The time of the alleged burial sites and the remnants of the ancient settlement of Kulta Ber give all the prerequisites to attribute this burial ground to the epoch of a mysterious state whose existence is capable of rewriting our history. Kangyu is a mysterious state which was in the territory of southern Kazakhstan from the 2nd century BC to the 4th century of our era. For the first time, the mention of Kangyu, it was mentioned in 138 BC by one of the Chinese travelers who said that in the junction of the Amudarya and Sirdarya there is a huge state of Kangyu. And of course, information about this is extremely scarce. Therefore, the archaeological excavations that have been carried out since the 1960s in this region in the area of the Aris River, the Sirdarya River, indicate that there was a state on the territory of Kazakhstan. A state that united several tribal alliances. Who knew the late Sarkas, the Samashians, all of them should have been mentioned, and actually the Kangyu themselves too. There was a flourishing of civilizations of nomads on the territory of modern Kazakhstan in the first millennium BC, such, for example, as the Saka tribal unions inhabiting these places from the 7th to the 3rd century BC. As you know, all these tribes led a nomadic way of life and did not build large settlements. Kangu civilization in this regard was strikingly different. <laughs> Here we have first the cradle of an early urban civilization. It's the cradle. This is one of the few early ethno-political associations which in the right to be called the state. There are certain, so to speak, indicators of statehood, state and statehood. So many of them can be seen in Kangyu state, including writing as a high level of civilization and an attribute of statehood.
Also, the state of Kangu was multi-ethnic, and it included population which led a nomadic way of life and a settled agricultural way of life. There was such a synthesis, and according to the political aspect and especially the historical and cultural. The so-called agricultural and pastoral culture of ancient southern Kazakhstan. This is really unique because here we have, there is such a concept of ethnic boilers. This is a conventional name. Where the settled, semi-settled and urban population mixes like this, assimilates. And the result is a unique, syncretic, very peculiar material and spiritual culture. Kanjui, so this ancient state is called in the Chinese chronicles. The most famous sources are Qin Han Shu, the book of the history of the early Khan dynasty, the book of the history of the early Han dynasty, the manuscript that covered the period from the 2nd century BC to the 25th year AD. This is an official chronicle compiled by the historian Ban Biao and completed by his son Ban Gu and daughter Ban Zhao. But not only this book carries information about the location and arrangement of Kangu. They are also mentioned in the book Shi Ji, historical notes written by the famous Chinese poet and statesman Sima Sanju, who lived in the second century BC. Since the center of the state of Kangu was southern Kazakhstan, and according to Chinese written sources, the Kangu consisted of five large possessions, one can logically assume that there were five such centers. But in fact, there were much more. This is due to the fact that there are very convenient conditions for living. According to hydrological and climatic aspects, southern Kazakhstan is the best and most convenient place of residence if we take our state. Therefore, it is no coincidence that this region has been inhabited since ancient times. Kangu flourished for six centuries. For the period of existence of the state in those days, it is an enormously long time. It was a developed urban civilization surrounded on all sides by numerous sites of nomadic tribes, with which the Kanguans peacefully adjoined and conducted trade affairs. What caused the decline and disappearance of this powerful state? The fact is that in the 4th century AD, a new tribal union of the so-called White Huns or Raftalites appeared in our Central Asia. They fought against Kangu and in a few decades, this state ceased to exist. There were some for about two centuries or rather individual Kangu lands, but not as an independent state. That is, in the fourth century, the end of Kangu was put by the invasion of Aftalites. White Huns or Aftalites are a large tribal union that existed in Central Asia, Afghanistan and Northern India in the fourth to sixth centuries of our era. There are many references in the writings of historians of the time about this people. Procopius of Caesarea, Theophanes of Byzantium and Amian Matsalin wrote about their life and aggressive campaigns. At the South Kazakhstan State Pedagogical Institute, there is a small museum where unique archaeological finds related to the era of the Kangu state are kept. The crew of the Time Puzzle program met with candidate of historical sciences, Associate Professor Guljan Sagibaeva, who has been studying this topic for several years with Alexander Podushkin. In 2016, the archaeological expedition found another proof. This is the remains of a sickle. It was found for the first time. This also indicates that our ancestors, and this is the second century BC, which means a half or two thousand years ago, there was an ancient state on the territory of Kazakhstan which left such traces, traces of sedentary and agricultural culture. Handicraft production was also developed here. It is proved by numerous homes, which are also found on the site of ancient settlement, which have found in cemeteries. 
because all items of utensils, life were buried together with the deceased. Naturally, everything that was found by our archaeological detachment was all found in the burial grounds. But the remnants of ancient agricultural implements are not the only artifacts that allow one to speak of the sedentary life of the Kangu people. Excavation of burial grounds and objects found in them told archaeologists about the high level of development of crafts that flourished in this territory. The beads we found on the Altin Tober cemetery, made of glass, it can be called glass. They consisted of two stages, for example, when a gold film was applied to a glass cylinder, a gold film and glass was again covered on top. But with the sunlight, they were shining because of the glass. Well, it is quite complex, in my opinion, technology for that time. If we are speaking about the iron, it's knives, daggers, fragments of swords. Because it is clear that if there was a sword, then it was a fairly noble person, a warrior who was probably decorated with gold products. In the burial, there were good such huge earrings, the so-called moon-shaped earrings. But in this case, they were not flat, but bloated, decorated with rubies. Why they were not stolen at one time, I do not know. Some finds allow us to draw conclusions about the developed trade relations of that period. So scientists find ornaments made from material not typical in this area. Beads can be different. There are also made of stone. Stone is from our mountains, let's say from Karatau. There are stones brought here from some distant regions which cannot be found in our mountains. This pasta beads, the so-called vitreous pastes, when in the process of firing, it is not glass yet, but not exactly the mass that can crumble, such a borderline condition. There are also coral beads made from corals. Scientists have to follow increased precautions because the history that the Earth hides inside becomes truly fragile and time imposes on it its ruthless imprint. Anything found in a burial that has lain for more than 100 years when it gets on, especially this applied to metal, when it gets on the surface, let's say, air getting a large amount of oxygen, the oxidation process is accelerated just to dozens of times. And if this thing cannot be restored, cannot be preserved immediately, it can simply disappear with time. We discovered and recorded a very powerful center of the state of Kangyu in the Ugam tract. There is a site of ancient Ujbas Tobe. It is also a few hectares and so to say gives amazing material. It is literally stuffed with archaeological material, including unique ones. For example, there we found an image of a human deity with a bird's head, a pheasant. This is the first in general image in our region on the expenses of the CIS. Continuing to study the territory on which Kangui once flourished, archaeologists have found many artifacts that allowed to assess the high level of development of this ancient civilization. 21st century gave scientists new, truly sensational findings. In the basin of the Aris, there is such a center. This is the largest fortress of Karaspanto Bear, which I connect with the ancient capital of the Kangui state, the city of Bitiai. There is a fortress nearby, also called Tobe, where unique writing is found on ceramic brick tables. If earlier on the territory of Kazakhstan there was an Archon Yenisei script, ancient Turkic writing, Writing is of Aramaic origin also, but it, these tables are made on this territory, not brought, they are not brought from somewhere. And most likely scientists say that it contains the archive data about the life, culture, activity of this city called Tobe. Despite such weighty findings, the scientific world is in no hurry to draw any conclusions and formally accept the discoveries of Padushkin's group. Nevertheless, the scientists, together with like-minded people, continue to study this unique civilization.
Arisian culture, which he singled out in his time, which is still under the skepticism of some of our scientists. While the time will judge how much and who was right, nevertheless, he is engaged in this constantly for many years. And the scope of his main activity, it's just the burial grounds of the middle reaches of the Aris, where we also come from time to time, we help him as far as possible. The Aris River is the right confluent of the great Sirdalia, stretching for about 400 kilometers. It flows through the territory of the South Kazakhstan region. And here in 1992, the first clay table containing mysterious letters in an unknown for that time language was found. As a result of these excavations, clay tables were found. They were made of clay, which is inherent in the region of the South Kazakhstan region. This indicates that these tables are not brought from somewhere. They are made here. Aris fortress Kultobek kept its secrets for more than three years after the first discovery, before scientists managed to find two more fragments of writing. After that, fortune smiled upon the researchers. In 2006, we found four fragments, one big text, and almost every year until the present time, we have found 16 fragments, which give us three almost finished texts, burnt brick tables. The letter was made on raw clay, then burned. There are even options for dismembering large texts on raw clay for easy burning, and which also means that the text information was large enough. The first writings found on the territory of Kazakhstan belong to the Okono Yenisei script, an ancient runic letter used in the territories of Central Asia and Siberia from the 8th to the 10th century AD. Its name was given by the first finds in the valley of Okon and the upper Yenisei. But the tables found in the Aris Kultabe were made much earlier, and after that researchers had the problem with deciphering. We managed to decipher only in 2007, thanks to the efforts of the outstanding paleolinguist of the world. This is Nicholas Sims Williams. He is an academician at Cambridge University and the University of London. He has his own linguistic laboratory in Cambridge. He was the first after a series of unsuccessful reading when the letter was declared Semitic, Jewish. Some tried to read it as a Turkic letter. He correctly identified that these letters were written in Aramaic script using ideograms. And it marks one of the dialects of the ancient East Iranian language. Now these tables are kept in the Central State Museum of the Republic of Kazakhstan, where they continue to study them. While our program was being filmed, it became known that one more well-preserved table was found on the Aris Mound in Kultobe. But what knowledge do the texts written on them give to contemporaries? The information there is very serious about the founding of the city, about the population of the ancient people. By the way, there in our text we meet the word nomad for the first time. It appears there is people of tents, and it turns out that these nomads were the owners of the land and that they were involved in the founding of the city. This completely changes the general picture of the attitude towards nomads who have been perceived for thousands of years. There are titles, or rather the titles of the rulers of Samarkand, Chacha, Bukharinovak, Metan and Kesh, means Koshi. Well, relational words, for example, treasury or treasure, son, father, that is, terms of kinship, well, and so on and so forth.
Due to the successful decoding, Kangu increasingly reveals its secrets and allows us to speak with confidence about it as a full-fledged urban civilization, which has one of the main features of statehood, writing and record-keeping on it. And it is natural that the finding of writing always indicated, always, at all times, that is the highest culture. And as we know, Kangus are one of the oldest, one of the most ancient states on the territory of Kazakhstan. I am often asked this question, what is the most outstanding discovery in your life that you've made? I believe that I was lucky to open and not only to open, but to make efforts to decipher and obtain information from the unique written language, Kangu script written on ceramic brick tables. New discoveries, including those which were made just recently, will undoubtedly shed even more light on the structure and life of our ancient ancestors. But what do scientists expect from the research of the Mintaber Cemetery and town of Kultaber on the site of the confluence of the Kalas River in the Serdaria? Will the Kalas Castle Fortress give a sensation like its namesake on the Aris River? We have a task. We set the task of conducting a small reconnaissance excavation at the ancient settlement of Kulta Bear, which, by the way, in the archaeological sense, is absolutely untouched monument. There are no traces of excavations. And if there are, they are connected. They are with the land creativity of the local population. It is the first task, and the second is to try to hook or, so to speak, go out to burials in barrows. This is much more complicated, and here, of course, we made a small excavation last year. This year we will continue to do this. Excavations on the Kelles Kulta Bear have already given scientists the material for research. There they were able to find ceramic products dating from the Kangu era. And the integrity of this ancient settlement allows to hope for the greater, because the ancient history lies here literally under your feet. Here is a piece of pottery. Look, here it is. Here is the bone. It is also ceramics. And here are the artifacts which show that the life was humming there 2,000 years ago. However, along with optimism, the participants of the expedition also have a healthy skepticism, since modern science primarily relies on concrete facts and not only on assumptions and guesses. I'd rather not to judge this yet, because there are no materials yet, there are no direct materials. That is, what we can find in the hill fort and what can be lying under the embankments. I'm a practical man. If I have not seen it, I cannot just judge and invent. Could this be related to or cannot it be related? Meanwhile, it all has the only way, in the area of hypotheses and some versions. This year the georadar is used for this, in order to finally clarify what are we digging. It may be possible to go straight to the construction, at least to understand approximately what are we talking about. The method of investigation using georadar is based on the use of electromagnetic waves sent by the transmitting device in the form of pulses. The reflected signal goes to a special device and, after processing, gives researchers information about the presence of voids or foreign objects in studied environment. Working with Alexander Nikolaevich Podushkin on Kultube burial ground. Burial ground. This is the middle course of the Aris. Yes, of course, there is something to compare because usually the contents of the burial material of those burial mounds that we met there is quite wide. Ceramic material, of course, Ashipka. Ceramic material, of course. Metal products of various types, from iron to bronze and silver. Beads, stone products, grindstone and so on and so on. The film crew of the Time Puzzle program spent a very short time with the archaeological expedition of Alexander Podushkin. But even for such a short stay among people inspired by their work, it became clear how difficult and important the work of archaeologists is. 
and the landscape filled with still silent mounds and majestic hills under which the ancient settlement is hidden made me feel close to something great and mysterious. Despite the fact that the archaeologists have yet to unravel all the secrets of Mintabe and Kultabe, scientists are already boldly talking about the discovery of a large Kangui center surrounded by nomadic tribes. The most interesting lies ahead. It was the time puzzle and me, Sergei Alexianik.